Hello, I welcome you all to this amazing business coaching session on how to create and grow a successful business in physiotherapy. This is a powerful three lecture series being brought to you by Project Ask Physios in collaboration with Star Exercises Physiotherapy Services. I'm Ravi Shankar, physical rehab business analyst and coach, and I'm the resource person for these three great topics which are about how a physio can create a great business, how he or she can have a leverage over the market competition, and how the business in physiotherapy created can become a great brand tomorrow. So let us make a great go on this. So we have different levels of healthcare, critical care, hospital level care, community level clinics, home care services, wellness level healthcare needs. So physiotherapy as a healing science it has not only sustained, it has grown, it has become stronger, it has diversified across centuries, delivering a great list of benefits across this whole continuum of healthcare levels, right? So while the society has been benefiting greatly from this set of professionals, this hasn't resulted in the financial abundance of physiotherapists. So the basic reason for this is a lack of commerce a lack of a well-structured business strategy within private practicing physiotherapy entities whether in clinics or in home care services so in this particular session we would be addressing this issue so the foundation of this issue comes from the very nature of physiotherapy profession now each and every physiotherapist needs to spend considerable amount of time with each and every patient on an average it's like 10 minutes 20 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes so with each and every patient requiring that but personal attention of a physio this results in a fact that any physio if he or she is continuously seeing patients in a day so there is definitely a maximum number of patients which he or she can attend in a day and so almost a fixed number of patients which he, he or she can attend within a month and in an year so now if throughout the whole year we know approximately what is the maximum number of patients a physio can see can attend to in an ear whether in clinic and in home care services so if you multiply that by the average amount which you charge from the patient so this means that the revenue is going to stay the same now this is the basic reason why physiotherapy becomes expensive because since the number of sessions are fixed in an ear that is the maximum which you can do and if you are looking forward to growing your revenues this is a mismatch you have a fixed amount of revenues because of the maximum fixed number of patients which you can see but at the same time you can't keep on increasing your fees your consultation fees your treatment charges right and the probability of a patient buying too many services from you at the same time is quite weak and hence physiotherapy is an expensive service but because of the demand but because of a weak business strategy what physios end up is selling their services for a lesser price right now lesser price it doesn't mean that 800 is a expensive price and 200 is a cheap price 200 can be an expensive amount 800 can be a cheap amount depending on the what business design the patient the therapist has adopted what are the business needs of his or her private physical rehab venture so we will understand these aspects further on so coming back to this that since physiotherapy is an expensive service and it has been sold cheap this is causing that dent in growth in revenues so already there was a requirement of earning more there is always uh, there is already a predictable amount which can be earned maximally from these patients but since it's being sold cheap 
on and off through the year so across every next year what the physios are earning remains the same right so why this is again happening because given the time pressure given the nature of the profession as i said they need to the physios need to spend time with the patient there is no automatic system where patients can come in and they can be seen automatically without the you know uh, without attending one to one so these situations they encourage the therapist to become busy in the operational aspect that is treating the patient taking the money treating the next patient taking the money treating the next patient taking the money so what happens is they have this vicious cycle of getting into making sales rather than capturing their di direct market right so once the moment you are out of your patient lot you start depending upon the external referring sources doctors lead providing companies you know you your friends your previous patients who you ask that if you have any referral please give it to uh, please ask them to have the treatment with me so what is happening is they are focusing on making the sales but not generating the leads in the market direct leads in the market so while they have been serving since many years right since many years they have been serving still the direct market acquisition is not the present norm so much established in this profession in india and this is a major dent so let us if we have a recap of the problem physiotherapy requires to be sold at a higher price but situationally it has to be sold cheaper and this causes the therapist to get into the vicious cycle of focusing on sales rather than increasing the direct market and and this creates the greatest dent the greatest vicious cycle that with less money earned the initiative the facilitation to have a greater initiative to increase their revenues there are almost nil initiatives for that now a physio who has learned a new skill 6 months back 1 year back 2 years back all the three skills all the four new skills it hardly results in a significant increase in their revenues whether they learn the skill or not learn the skill there is not much significant difference in the revenues which on an average any physio makes in india so expensive service sold cheap focus gets to get more sales because because once we sell cheap we need to have we need to recover we need to recover our revenues we need to have constant inflow of patients so we depend more and more on referral services rather than investing time and money over direct market which should give us more stability right and so since there is almost most of the physios whom i have interacted with they say that 90000 to 1.5 lakhs is the bracket which they feel they have got stuck into as an individual right so this is that vicious cycle which has to be broken if there is an intention to increase personal revenues or increase the revenue of the your private clinic or your home care services so let us take this example of a mango business if a mango is there in your courtyard in your backyard right so you can your family can uh, enjoy those mangoes you can gift it to your family uh, your neighborhood people you can maybe trade a bit of that in the local market but suppose the same mango tree is in a big orchard which you own then what are the possibilities you will not only have mangoes for yourself you will have a lot more to trade in for big amount of money 
you will have a lot more to trade in maybe for wood maybe you can you know you can open a small play uh, school uh, that play school under that cool shed so there are a lot of possibilities which you can have once that tree is there is a part of your orchard but to gain all that you need to invest over there you need to have a security person who would be taking care of all the uh, you know the good mangoes which come up nobody chops of their trees you you would need to have a person who is going to water those new saplings you need to have a supply chain contact who can connect with you for you know selling all those mangoes you you won't be going to sell all those mangoes in the market so somebody would be coming in you'd be trading with them they'll be buying your mangoes and they'll be taking it further to the market so while that tree in the orchard is going has a larger prospect but it needs much more investment it needs much more attention it needs much more monitoring as compared to the mango tree which is there in your orchard so the same thing happens in our private businesses too if you have if you're working as an individual if you have a clinic if you are having a team of physios right so if you're looking forward to serve merely two three kilometers around your clinic you are looking forward to treating only those patients who have been referred you are waiting for the patient to come in you are not seen in the market then you're actually it's like having that tree in your courtyard but if you are looking forward to increase your revenues if you're thinking of getting into business then you have to think about how you're going to invest your time money and person right so let us uh, move further on this so if whether if you're having an existing business or you want to start one a new one or you want to ha you're already having a clinic and you want to start a new clinic at a new location or you want to expand with a new team for home services in a new location so it's the same starting line for all it doesn't matter how much talented you have how much talent pool you have your you can have a team of great physios but then it's in terms of business the moment you start thinking of starting new the moment you start thinking of expanding further improvising further it you come to the same starting line as anybody else whether it be a fresher whether it be somebody who is skilled at the same level as you or is having better resources than you but still whosoever is starting has the same starting line right so if you're having an existing business then you would need to analyze the strengths and weaknesses of the same unless and until you do this you won't be in a position to increase your revenues further on right and once you analyze you have to write a new business plan or if you're already having a business plan which in my experience hardly any physio has in india new business plan right so mark my words if you're going thinking of starting a new business in physiotherapy a new clinic a new set of home care services in physiotherapy you need to have a new business plan if you have any existing service you have to replan how you're going uh, going to be doing with your new business so with these new business plan it is a documented thing you have to write it down it's not something that which he goes through your mind business is never run like that you need sops you need milestones that in how much amount of time what revenues i will generate and then what would be the next target because unless and until you have milestones you won't be able to progress as a business you might be doing well as a clinic that okay these many patients come we are busy through the day we don't have any complaints we are happy i think we are top guns no you might be a top gun as a individual clinical performer 
but you won't develop into a brand right and businesses businesses become a brand star performances they never make you a brand right so focus on getting a right business plan for yourself now what are the so what are the next level needs to write a business plan what you need you need to focus on your core competency don't try to be a supermart don't make it tough for the market to identify you you know if you're if you are known in the market that you are a specialist of neck and shoulder it doesn't mean that knee ankle and back patients won't be coming to you but then they it will be much easier for them to recognize you as a specialist there is a physiotherapist there is a physio who is having a reputation of being a post operative a great post operative rehabilitation therapist whether at the clinic level or for home services so if the person has an option they would first prefer to interact with the therapist who is specialized into something so that because they believe that he or she would be providing a better guidance towards overall rehabilitation process so make it easier for the market to recognize you to identify you to approach you so focus on your core competencies what skill sets you have it's okay if you're not a comt it's okay if you're not a mulligans it's okay if you are not uh this uh, cupping therapist it's okay if you're not happy uh getting uh, you know uh, for these high end electrotherapy equipments whatever you do whatever you think even the simplest of the rehabilitation processes if you think you have a great hand at that if you feel that out of 10 patients if seven or patients would come from that kind of skill set which you have you will be growing as a business you will be making much more revenues as a business because what you will be able to offer to the market is a greater recovery extent in lesser amount of time in a more predictable manner so what you need to understand is that your core competency is the key to creating the right business plan if you have a team where you have long term team players and you know their clinical expertise then create a business plan which includes all the skill sets which the overall team has if you have a orthopedic if you have a cardiologist if you're neurophysio and you you three are creating a team then make sure that you promote in the market the high end skills the top two end skills of each and every of these therapists so that will help the market in identifying you as an individual or your team amongst other competitors so whatever your core competency is it is also required that it should have a sizable market whether those many number of patients who are requiring your services all of them are able to access you or not is a secondary question the question is what number of patients in your society would be benefiting now there would be patients who would be able to come but then there might be if you there might be a scenario where through e consultation for a similar problem you can e consult much many more number of patients across india right so the size look at the size of the market with respect to your core competency don't ever think that your competency is only required to treat 3 or 4 km people in and around your clinic you need those clinics those your expertise is required by the whole country so you have to adopt a business ways which has not only local impact but it can its benefit can be escalated towards you know helping the society across india so the next requirement is you must add a character to your business now once you have identified what are your core competencies now a clinic can have a character of having treating back pain a a business entity can be having an image of providing great home care services 
it can be having an image that the, you connect more with community level rehabilitation needs so you need to attach a character to your business and different people like for a physio you might be a, an, a great employer in the field of clinics you might be a great employer in terms of home services but what we are talking about is your character in terms of the market because we're talking about the market to identify you to approach you directly so that you don't have to share any revenues with anybody right so once you have planned to start a new business or you have analyzed your existing business you have to write a new business plan so focus on the core competences which have been existing which have for which you have treated most number of patients so analyst analyzing your data is very important for that how many what kind of patients you have treated in past six months one year two years like that and so once you do that you identify what are the further possibilities what are the possibilities which we can explore further which can bring more revenues in the new uh, prospective business plan and then you attach a character to your business and once this happens you have to start thinking what processes to adopt right now what is a process now if in your clinic you are handling queries you are converting them you are treating them you are giving them bills that means you have employed yourself in your own work right so all your time all your money and all your effort goes into one place but growth of revenues will happen when your time money and person you are able to diversify it and commit it to more than one places like suppose uh, that is how it works that you outsource your lead requirements to a company that you, i'm paying you this much you give me these many number of leads in a month right you outsource or you uh, adopt a billing software where you can once you enter the patient details and then you have a sensor you have a barcode you click and everything that new session has been done this that everything gets uploaded and then at the end of the month you just click one button and you have all the reports so what you're trying to do is you're trying to save your time time is money always remember so the more time you have the more money the more scope you have to you know earn more money to generate more revenues to go into meetings to make business expansions now remember that vicious cycle where i said that once the we all the you know uh, degrading factors they ultimately create a vicious cycle where you have you're left with less money and so you are left with quite less motivation to invest into something which will help you grow for example if i have extra 20000 rupees with me minus all my expenses and everything i still have 20000 i might be thinking of creating a great treat for my team i might be thinking of extending that 20000 as a as a you know discount i made the, those 20000 uh, in past 3 months so all those patients who attended my sessions in my clinic for my home services in the past three months i can give them a cashback offer i can give them a discount further on that if you refer somebody we will give them this much of discount or if you refer somebody we will give you this much of a cashback so discounts are a tool to increase your revenues it shouldn't be it never make it a tool which makes your clients smell your financial problems right they will smell clients are very sharp they will understand in a moment that you want their money and so they will focus on dealing negotiation so you need to understand that when you get into a business process you will never get anything free in the market if you haven't purchased anything cashbacks are something are given from the profits which are made in the last quarter or maybe in the past two quarters so discounts are advantages which you give to the market because they have helped you grow and so you help them back so time money and person 
you need to set different processes so that from lead generation to converting them into a business retaining them and then selling them repeatedly to the selling different services repeatedly as per needs you need to have a variation in your services given what kind of uh, expertise you have in your team or if you're alone then what different kind of services either in groups or individual you can keep extending uh, every now and then so time money and person you need to set these so for these you need to have processes only a process can help you preserve your time money and person else there is no other way out and this is where the growth is hiding the key to having a growth in your revenues in your business is to diversify the use of your time money and person right so now uh, we, while writing these uh, business plan you have focused on your core competency which has a sizable market you have attached a character which people can which will be very helpful for people to identify your business and then you diversify your time money and effort so that you have scope left for new collaborations finding new talents engaging in workshops skill trainings and everything you know so now you to now everything done you need to have a analysis of what resources you are going to require resources can be anything it can be a proper place having good space good utilities uh, you know your equipments a place which is very convenient for patients to come and park their vehicles to so resources can be anything it can be your computer it can be your internet connection so we need to have an understanding of to have a profitable business what resources are best fitting in my business plan right so we will be having a short quick look on what resources are required so number one is partnerships if you have opened your if you're planning to start your business with partnerships then always remember that partners should be having complementary abilities two partners having same abilities it's more likely to give com internal generate internal competition and so it's not healthy right so one of the partners must be suppose he or she must be capable of getting into the market and the other one must be an expert in handling the clinical operations one should be able to you know find have an eye for a new talent and the other one should be having an eye for providing a great training you know that environment and all so partnerships are something which are very crucial most of the time it's the fights it's the disagreements over the revenue sharing and all but this the basic thing is if it is complementary then the partnership actually strengthens over a period of time and goes uh, that goes on that lays a strong foundation so if you are having you're looking forward to doing more collaborations more partnerships then please know it has to be complementary it doesn't have to be internally competitive hiring staff so you'll be obviously requiring as a resource great staff to work for you so one of the ways is hiring by asking how much you know how much will you take how much time will you devote with us will you do home services for us also so but what you'll have is you might end up having unintentional parasites associated with your business unintentional they are not intending but then there won't be much motivation for them that okay you ask me a condition if i i agree to work for you for this amount between 9 to 5 okay i'll let me devote that much time only so the better way to create a great business is hire by telling right that in this business i am i wish to make the society which is within 5 km within the 5 km radius of my clinic that each and every elderly person must be able to move without any joint pain 
So now that's the kind of a movement I have created. So what kind of a movement? Do you agree that you are, you'd be interested in having this kind of a project with you? And even if you are seeking an opportunity as an employee, never fear asking for this kind of a query from your prospective employer. Sir, I know you are a neurological unit, but I'm actually passionate. Though I'm looking for a job, I'm quite passionate about finding people with, you know, post-operative back pain. So would you be interested in having me in your team while I'll be learning things, I'll be helping you as a backup for your staff for the neurological specialities. But then would you be interested in, you know, curating me and using me as a resource for post-operative back pain patients in your market? So, you know, normally when I talk to people and they say, the employer says it's hard, really hard to find good employees and if you ask employees they say oh if my boss if i have great ideas but the person needs to listen to me so it can't be that two people the employer and employee they're on a lookout for each other and yet they're not able to find each other this is something because this mechanism has to be corrected so remember if you want to have a growth in your revenues always try to hire a staff by telling them what you're doing try to hire people who are better than you different from you never ever fear that competition it it is quite hilarious it is quite hilarious as a business coach for me when i hear that okay you know you hire people you teach them everything and then they ditch you and then they become your competitors what what the person is trying to say that I hired somebody, I provided the opportunities, he or she grew, moved, tried to move ahead of me because obviously he or she had capabilities or something. But I also I'm also admitting inadvertently that okay, I didn't do anything to grow myself. I provided all the opportunities to my employee, but I stayed at the same point. Now, this is quite hilarious. So, a progressive leader, be a leader. You are as strong as the capabilities, the skill set of your team. So, if you're looking forward to a business, great business, always remember you can't create a great business without having a team. You can't scale up the Mount Everest with just a cylinder and a, you know, oxygen mask you need a co-climber there is a backup team there is emergency response team backup you know down down the hill so it's a whole team effort which helps one or two person two people conquer the mount everest so the same way if you have a great financial goal always remember the higher the goal you have more the trainings more the accuracy more the diligence of your team is required you need to provide the right kind of a work environment you need to be you know providing opportunities for them to grow within your system and that is why hiring a staff would be interesting in growing with you growing towards a profession is much more required rather than just hiring somebody who would be under your command is not going to challenge you for anything is not going to question you for anything so as a business coach i'm telling you if you are not making a net worth of one crore, then please, do, you, you won't be in a position to you know, break these vicious cycles. If you have extra 20,000, you will be willing to spend. But if you, all you have is 20,000, which, which includes your regular expenses, you will never have the heart to spend on team trainings, hiring somebody better, creating a wave in the market you will be actually busy in just trying to maintain your expenses with the revenues you earn. So your resources are quite important. So the first resource we talked about was partnerships, hiring staff, and then next resource is service and business monitoring tools. Now, any two physios, they need to have a standardization of therapies, what exactly has been done. Now, every knee replacement patient 
the surgeon might be doing a press release that this was a challenging case we, replica we uh, really did well but hardly there is any press release about a highly challenging physical rehabilitation case which has been done by a physio but all that is done if, if whatever I have read through it doesn't uh, mention exactly what was the high-end challenge whether it was in the inherent patient's problem whether it was in the behavior of the patient whether it was in the feasibilities of the environment of the patient that the compliance would not have been achieved for home exercise programs by the patient and the family and yet the result was achieved you would need softwares you need mobile apps you would need avenues if you're using apps then your patients your end users must be tech educated if you have a if your clinic if your business has an app but your patients don't know how to operate it or they don't find it convenient then having that kind of an app is not a resource for you it becomes a liability for you so whatever you know analytical tools you have therapy modules you have home exercise instructing uh, SOPs you have they're all your resources so you need to have these resources in place so if you have a, uh, identified your skill set you have a sizable market then when you're working with a venture having a great partnership having a great staff you need to have these service and business monitoring tools means like a software which can give an input how many inquiries how many conversions what amount of revenue generated what expenses what bills have been paid so in one go you can have all the things in front of you so that it helps you understand what better we have done what we lost in process in revenues in the past month in the past three months in past six months because all these monitorings are going to help you you know modifying the way you are doing a business like you're driving on a road if there are potholes you don't stop the car but you just change the gears so service and business monitoring tools are quite important for you right and then payment conveniences and bill commitments so payments make it as easy as conveniency discounts are a price benefit but whether the person can pay through a cash check debit card online payment QR code so all these are the conveniences so make it convenient for the person a, an old person who is coming the son is there in the US and wants to make a bank transfer okay be open to it why you should be open to these legitimate ways Try to avoid cash, try to avoid cash because the more you have in your bank, more is the probability that you'll be able to take business loans if you have a great project with you, with banks tomorrow, right? With financial institutions tomorrow. And so giving bill commitment, bill is a certificate which you're actually giving to the patient that yes, I'm taking the full accountability of the service which I have given you. I'm ready to debate it on any platform on this earth that if you tomorrow say that I have not served you well, then either if I understand that I have really done wrong, if there has been some kind of an error from my team, we will be accepting that professionally. Otherwise, if we feel that no, we, we haven't created any harm to you, we are ready to contest that. So bill is something which will establish your credibility in the market you see all these great outlets whether it be clothes eateries they have this thing very neatly written in their billing sections in their reception areas that if you don't get a bill for your purchase then your purchase is for free so that means if you don't get a bill if you require to do an exchange if you want to return a defective piece if you want to have a change in color you won't be entertained over there right and so once you have a bill if any defective thing happens then you have the right to change so insist on giving bills to the patient you might be having patients come in and say doctor we don't want to have the bill how much we'll have to pay don't get into this greed of receiving cash patient
cash payments you right so payment conveniences and bill commitments are a great resource and having done all these what have we done right we have identified the resources right we have staff salaries we have you know rentals and fixed costs going through all these things so you need to cost calculate how much it is it has it will cost you remember we are still talking about we are not started a clinic we are talking about creating a great business plan so once you are calculated the whole cost of it that how much i have spent in creating this whole business or how much i will be spending in creating this business you will be required to understand how many number of patients you would require to recover that cost and get into profit and in those once you have those numbers you will be able to calculate how much your services must be priced now suppose you give a discount to a person out of 10 rupees you say okay you know that as per the costing you need to charge a patient at minimum 10 rupees right so suppose in any case if you have offered a discount of 2 rupees and you have sold the service at 8 rupees you required 10 rupees but you sold that to gain market it's okay you sold that for 8 rupees but remember if you think that you'll make up for the next for the remaining two rupees from the next patient it's hardly a chance you need to either you need to you know have schemes that if there's room, remaining two rupees they have to be recovered from other patients through other schemes through other services either from the same patient or from all other patients maybe not exactly two rupees but maybe in 50 paisa terms in one rupee terms so ultimately you have to recover that 10 rupees for that one particular patient now you understand the value of monitoring you know you will be able to you must be able to analyze your data that what is what is the amount which you are putting in your clinic in your home services staffing rentals and everything you know if you're paying traveling allowances and everything then how much is it costing you and so how many number of patients you must have to recover that cost and as per that you have to price your services now you know the whole business how much service how many services what kind of service at what prices you have a next important resource of marketing you need to be visible to the market you need to give reasons to the market that one mark that identify that specialized skill set which you need the market to know so that they start approaching you so that they start paying you at the price they help you recover all the cost and then they help you achieve profits over a period of time right so marketing is something which is going to help you run your venture okay so what will marketing give you it will give you inquiries it will give you inquiries people will are having a need they come to know that okay you are providing a specialized service or a set of specialized services for the problem problems which they have they give you a call over the telephone they walk in or something and once you have shared all the details it converts into a lead so here's the difference between an inquiry and a lead right so once a patient an inquiry has been shared all the details of what is your package and everything or maybe you have assessed and yet the patient is to decide when and what uh, program to enroll for as suggested by you that is still a lead okay so once you have a lead you can focus on following it up and converting it and then retaining it for the required period of time so if a patient is requiring three months of physiotherapy you'll have to ensure the patient doesn't walk away after two weeks 
if you calculate if you try to calculate how many patients have discontinued their services prematurely you will find that at the given price you have made lakhs if not thousands right that is a loss which you have made so retaining a converted lead in the right manner is something which is kind of a soft skill set which you need which is again a resource for you so after all what, what we have been talking about that we have been writing this new business plan right so all these things which we just discussed we haven't yet implemented because what is required is the right patience for the right time to start to you know enhance to expand to start looking for new talent you need to have a backup money if you're planning to start a new clinic if you're start thinking of expanding your services to new locations if you're planning to launch a new set of expertise in the market because you have to each and every of these will consume time and money so as i said time is money so the more time you require to capture the direct market remember your market is not sustainable over referred cases if you think you have a great relationship established with a with three four five ten doctors people in your locality they come to, over to you then always remember there are many more physios who are going to come in future there are many more private entities corporate entities they are very powerful bodies they would be coming and paying those doctors to have all those patients given transferred to them rather than to you so as a private practicing clinic if you want to take your mango tree from your courtyard to the orchard you have to have an understanding of creating the right business plan and then having the patience to analyze what is the best time to launch or to venture into it and the deciding factor is how much backup amount you have there is no intelligence in creating and starting something and then you know starting something in a weak partnership or starting a process with a, a ill staff you know um, uh, of, with a staff who is not too much com uh, committed to the cause of the venture or does who doesn't have a dream of contributing to the society and growing in terms of learnings and all so you need to have the right kind of a backup there's no intelligence in starting something while knowing that it won't work you start something with an intention that come whatever i'm going to run this for next 2 years right obviously business decisions have to be taken there are situations which do come in but what we are talking about are calculated risk once you have written down your business plan you know if an emergency comes what decision you have to make you may sell you may collaborate you may close at the same way if your business starts making profit you would know what will be the next milestone because that you have already documented right so having said all these i uh give a great thank you to you for going through this vigorization as well as i want you to attend the next two important sessions the next session is even more powerful about how to deal with the competition the market if you're thinking of increasing your revenues then definitely there are a lot of players not only other private practicing physios but there are corporate entities there are doctors who are having their own set of physiotherapy teams so let us be looking forward to interacting again right so great thanks for joining in great thanks for project ask physios and This is Ravi Shankar signing off from this session.